Hey, I hope you guys learned a couple things here this video. Oh man, guys, so I was desperate. You guys know I've been struggling with my stretch big. I reached out to my guys at NBA 2K Lab. Now, you know, they got the modern controllers. They know how to get all the data so that when you're creating your player, it's the perfect build for you. Uh, so they helped me out here with this video. Shout out to them. I'm gonna leave their link in the description. You're gonna see my new build. That's not that garbage ass stretch you seen in the last video here in this video. And you're gonna learn a whole lot of things about shooting. Huh. I'm recording a video on YouTube right now. Instagram, say hi to YouTube. YouTube, say hi to Instagram. All right, man, this is what y'all wanted to see. My build is labeled a three-level score. Now, I'm gonna keep it a beam with you guys. It's probably one of the more popular builds. If you hop on the park, you can see a lot of people with this build on here. I think they have a very broad definition of what qualifies as a three-level scorer because I've seen some with attributes that look totally different than mine, but they're still called that, three-level scorer. So the pie chart I chose was half slashing, half shooting, and then a little bit of defense and playmaking in the mix. Basically, the way that I built my attributes made it so that I have fantastic bad on my players. Can it drive? Yeah, 82 drive and layup, good shot close. Can it shoot? Of course, 82 three point shot. There we go. The ball handling is decent, 77, which means that this player could probably speed boost if I get to a 99 overall. I have someone on my team with floor general. So maybe, and maybe if I had takeover, so a little bit of a stretch, but the dribbling is solid on the player. The only thing that's lacking is the defense. You know what I mean? I guess my defense will make up for it, I don't know. The reason I was really excited about making the build though is because I have 20 finishing upgrades, 21 shooting upgrades, 17 playmaking, and of course the one defense. That's a lot of badges. My stretch big had a total of like 34. So I was struggling to shoot with the stretch big, like severely. And I thought for a while it was the jump shots because I was releasing them perfectly. These are jump shots I used in 19, 18, 17. I was trying it all. I was doing all the tests. I reached out to my guys at NBA 2K Lab, tried to get some information. Of course you talk. I'm talking with other players, seeing what works. This video, I'm gonna break down everything I learned because there's so much that's different this year. Everything is dependent on your badges, especially for the shooting builds. You can have a fantastic build, but until you get some badges like Hot Zone Hunter, Rage Extender, Quick Draw, Deadeye, you might not be able to shoot with that build. I need a towel. I have boxers on so you guys can't see. All right, first of all, caption this in the comments. This photo right here, it was in my last video. All right, so let's get started. This year, of course, Quick Draw plays a really big role. Previous years, we just assumed everybody would use what we now refer to as Gold Quick Draw or the Quick Releases. But everything is so complicated. Look, NBA 2K Lab put out this tweet. Quick Draw impacts some jump shots more than others. We have added a show details link to the jumpers table to display jumper speeds at each badge level. One thing we've noticed is sometimes Bronze Quick Draw does not speed up the selected jump shot at all. So not only did they change the way that we adjust the speed of the jump shots, it doesn't even affect every jump shot the same way. So it's like, ah, damn, we gotta learn everything for a new jump shot. It might not apply the same. And in the photo here, they use an example of Carmelo's release. And there's all kinds of data. There's a different release speeds and windows to green the shot. The windows look pretty consistent regardless of which quick draw you have on. But obviously, the higher the quick draw, the faster your release goes off. But across the board, most jump shots have been slowed down or altered. If you were a fan of base 11 or Aldridge, base nine, set shot 13, which were really popular back in 2K19 and even 18, they're gonna feel different this year. And I think that's 2K Dev going out of their way to patch the jump shots they knew everybody was abusing. Even though I don't see it as abuse, in their minds, it's like a glitch in the game to be able to snap your jump shot to the green window, so they don't want that to happen. Just to give you an example of how much things have changed. In this year, assuming gold quick draw, 615 milliseconds. That's how long it takes to get off the shot, a Carmelo release. See, this table is from NBA 2K19. If we look at Carmelo in NBA 2K19, it was 462 milliseconds. That is a massive difference. You guys probably felt that if you've been playing the game and trying your jump shots from previous years. So you're like, all right, so none of the jump shots from previous years works. What does? That, my friend, is a very solid question. I have some answers for you. If you don't have quick drop, I'm telling you right now, Kevin Love is the best release in the game. Low latency, high latency, it does it all. Look at my player right now, look at the badges. I don't even wanna attack quick draw on this new player yet. At some point I will, but it's not my highest priority because I wanna get the badge that's gonna help me green easier. Is it inconvenient to have a slow Kevin Love? Yes, but if you're leaving me open, I'm banging the shot. Now, it shouldn't be much of a surprise to you if you've been playing 2K for a while. In 2K20, like other years, hot zones plays a very, very big deal. Maybe more so this year than other years because not only is a hot zone important, but you can attach badges to your hot zone so you just, it's out of the park. 
out of the park. We're gonna get to the badges in a moment. Now, this again, shout out to NBA 2K Lab. They have a hot zone section here where for different three point ratings, they tested the make percentage when you have a hot, a neutral, or a cold spot on the court. It really doesn't make too much of a difference in terms of the percentage. Three, four percent, that's not nothing noticeable you're gonna see in the game. But we're gonna talk about in a moment why it's very important to develop those hot zones. Oh, we didn't finish talking about jump shots. How could I forget? No quick draw, easy. Kevin Love, I'm telling you. It works for my career, it works for Park. It's a jump shot I'm using right now on my new three level score. It's also very convenient because you don't need the jump shot creator. So you don't have to grind my career to December or January just to be able to use the jump shot you're comfortable with when you make a new build. It's right there, it's available, just download it. If you have gold quick draw and you're playing on low latency, base 49 with Curry is the best jump shot flat out in the game, period. Unfortunately, I don't have the luxury to play on low latency. You don't need me to tell you, maybe I should because it's been a while since I made a video like this. It plays a big role. Base 49 is a really, really good base this year. So even if you don't pair it with a Curry release one and release two with gold quick draw, you'd be fine. There's gonna be plenty of combos you can make with base 49. Uh, I don't wanna go into like, cause NBA 2K Lab has a whole bunch of premium content and I'm not trying to show off all their information because that's how they make their money, it's their business. But base 49, I'm telling you right now, very, very solid build. It's been solid since 17, 18, 19, and now 2K20. If you have gold quick draw and you need a high latency jump shot, I don't know. You had to tell me. All the tests I've done with gold quick draw and high latency jump shots has been on my stretch big. And that build is horrible, so I'm not gonna use those tests as an indication of how effective a jump shot can be. I just won't. The same applies for Hall of Fame quick draw. But I'll tell you this, one of the bases that blew up out of nowhere this year, a lot of people are using, Jump Shot 38. So whether you just use that straight up or you find a combo that you feel comfortable with, Jump Shot 38 is one of the most popular bases to start 2K20, so unless, for whatever reason, Mike Wang is playing Disco Tech and patches it anytime soon, you're gonna be very straight with that jump shot. Is it my cup of tea? Probably not. Would I rather have base 49? Yeah, but there's a lot of people using it, so there's definitely some merit. All right, let's talk about badges because it's like you can't even live without badges this year. You need badges. Are you gonna shoot the ball? Then get your badges. You gotta hit the my career because you won't, you won't be out there in the park getting cold spots on your player. All right, so I made a whole tier list for all the shooting badges and I consulted with a whole bunch of shooters. And of course, myself, the greatest shooter of all time. If we just ignore the last video I posted. This is what the tier list looks like, ladies and gentlemen. There's a tier S, tier A, B, C, D, and no man's land. No man's land, of course, is the badges that could be a S, could be a D. We really don't know. We just have to wait for NBA 2K Lab or I guess, you know, empirical data to decide whether or not those badges can be effective. Without a shadow of a doubt, Range Extender is one of the, if not the most important badge in the game. It's, it's so priceless to be able to go from shooting at the three point line to step like four or five steps back at the hat. Not only does it make it way easier to grind my career and get rep, but you just allowed so much more flexibility. So without a doubt, that should be one of the badges you're focusing on when you're doing shooting. That goes without saying, limitless range from last year. This year though, it's even more important because it also applies to long twos, not just long threes. So it's doubly important. You want the mid range from 22 feet away? Go ahead and get your range extender. That's the first badge I got with my new build. It's unfortunate that it worked out this way, but yeah, quick draw is also a badge you're gonna need. Now, can you get away without quick draw? Yes. Is any decent team gonna give you enough time to be able to get a shot off that's 700 milliseconds long? No. But there are combinations you can do to your jump shot. Let's say your base is 745 milliseconds. That's a long ass time. You could add certain releases to it like Larry Bird that will help speed it up. I don't know if it's gonna be money, but there's definitely ways to speed up slow releases. So for a lot of people, Quick Draw is gonna be the most important badge. So it's a tier S, without a doubt. And out of nowhere, ladies and gentlemen, who would have expected Hot Zone Hunter is a tier S badge? Yo, cause when you read the description, boost the shot percentage for attempts taken in a player's favorite spots, you don't think much of it. But because this year's shooting is so different, in previous years, you just tried to shoot as good as possible. If it was a white, it probably hit. If it was a green, it definitely hit. But this year, whites miss a lot. And so at the beginning of the year, a lot of people were looking at badges like flexible release to see maybe that can help mitigate the problem. If I'm shooting all whites, maybe flexible release can help me hit those shots more consistently. You couldn't be more wrong, ladies and gentlemen. Davis was telling me this since like day two and I didn't believe him at first. He's 100% correct. Hot Zone Hunter is one of the most effective badges in the game. You're gonna go from shooting all whites to greening all of that shit 
if you have your hot zone. The hot zones don't make a big difference, 64%, 64%, 64% if you have a 99 three-point shot. Like, maybe we're looking at 8%, 4% differences between neutral to hot. But once you pair it with hot zone hunter, it's wraps. So I'm being very serious. That should be one of the first badges you get. One of the first badges I got. Now we're moving on to tier A, ladies and gentlemen. Tier A, of course. Starting off with catch and shoot. You're gonna catch the ball a lot, right? Do you want like a 20% boost to your shot when you catch it? All right, then just put on catch and shoot. That goes without saying, it's been in the game for a while. Same goes with dead eye. Especially if you're a sharpshooter, you should most definitely be focusing on dead eye. It helps you shoot contested shots more easily. If you're a taller player, maybe you don't need that help, but maybe it'll help make you even more lethal. Have you thought about that? It's kind of weird the way the shot contest register this year. I'll be all over somebody and it'll say like 4% contested. And then I'll be behind a guy jumping and it'll say like 58% contested. Yeah, catch and shoot and dead eye are staples. They've been one of the most effective badges for sharpshooters for us like three, four years now. Tier B, corner specialist, green machine, and difficult shot. Now, the reason corner specialist is not tier A is because when you're shooting in the corner, most of the time, it's off a of catch and shoot. So you might as well just equip catch and shoot because it's gonna apply in more situations. On top of that, I don't know if this is widely known, but just because you don't have bronze, silver, Hall of Fame catch and shoot does not mean you don't get boosts when you catch and shoot. You still get a boost, it's just not as much as if you had the badges. Green Machine is one of the new badges, description reads, increases the bonus for consecutive excellent releases. If you're a sharpshooter, no brainer. If you have like five upgrades, maybe don't touch Green Machine, Hot Zone Hunter is more important. Green Machine though does have the potential to climb to a tier A. Potentially. This year, the name of the game is not trying to hit whites, it's trying to hit as many greens as possible. And any badge that helps you do that should be one you prioritize. Difficult shots, I've heard on and off about this build. I'm not, I'm not really sure. I've talked to shot creators, they say, yo, the badge doesn't even pop up a lot of the times, even when I'm fading. And I've talked to other people that say it's made all the difference when it comes to making their fading shots. If you have like 20 plus badges, you should take a look at it. If you have less than 20 badges, I would just focus on all the other ones we spoke about. Tier C, flexible release, tireless shooter, hot start, pick and popper. Pick and popper, obviously, because a pick and pop is a catch and shoot. Just get catch and shoot. Hot start is one of the new badges they added to the game, improves the player's shooting ability after making the first shot until a miss occurs. I'm not gonna lie to you, this has a potential to climb up there, but for all intents and purposes, I'd rather have Green Machine and Hot Zone Hunter. Tireless Shooter is the one I'm a little bit iffy about. Because if you're playing Park, you're probably fine. You probably don't need it. But if you're dribbling OD and out of stamina a lot, or you're playing Pro-Am and so by the fourth quarter you're gassed, it could be a useful badge. I can't see a situation in which I'm getting it over anything that's tier B, A, or S, but it can be useful. I know a lot of people are asking for stamina buffs. There's a chance Mike Wang might adjust the stamina even more. And so if they do, then this badge is gonna be incredibly useless. But for now, we're gonna keep it at tier C. And probably the most important badge, because a lot of people have been asking questions about it. And shout out to NBA 2K Lab, because I reached out to them and I was like, yo, I have to know, because everybody's talking about flexible release. Can you get the data? That's exactly what they did, ladies and gentlemen. Flexible release is a tier C badge bad. Here's why. To test flexible release, we use a creative player to take corner threes at various timings. We took shots inside of the jumper's green window, as well as a 10 millisecond, 25, 40 millisecond outside the green window. To take these shots, we use a creative player using Curry's jump shot with a 75 three point rating and shot corner threes. We use this player to test the make and green percentage for each badge level. To help you relate the timings, you can use the images below. Flexible release reduces the penalty suffered from mistiming jump shot releases. So when you initially hear that, you're like, all right, I'm not gonna mistime my jump shot, I don't need that useless badge. But then you play 2K20 and everything is all white, especially before you get your badges, and you start thinking to yourself, hold on, flexible release might just be the greatest badge in the game. But once we look at this data here, it doesn't look like it. Now, the brown here is bronze, silver of course is gray, gold is gold, and purple is Hall of Fame. If you're shooting inside the green window, it's irrelevant. If you look carefully though, 10 milliseconds, 25, and 40, the worse you release the ball, the more helpful flexible release is. But if you're releasing the ball 40 milliseconds off the time, then I don't even wanna play with you. Why are you a horrible shooter? So the thinking is, is if you are if you have an all white, flexible release will help you hit the shot. But even when you look at the 10 millisecond graph here, if you have bronze, it makes a 1% difference. Silver, it makes a 2.5% difference. Gold is 7.5%. And Hall of Fame is 115 
So if you spend four badge upgrades on flexible release, you have an 11% higher chance of hitting that shot. So let's say it's an all white release, right? And there's a 70% chance it goes in, 30% chance it misses. 11.5 is a good bump, but there's still a chance you missed the shot even with Hall of Fame. Unless you're a very horrible player and you're actively shooting over 40 milliseconds off time, then you don't need flexible release. It can be useful. I can see situations in which it might be, but it had a lot of promise and it did not match up. I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of badges you wanna get before flexible release. Unless something changes in shooting, which there's a possibility it might throughout the course of the year, a good possibility, the name of the game is not to hit whites, is to avoid whites at all costs. And for those who don't know, depending on the jump shot you have, depending on the base that you have, some whites will hit more than others. So for example, the reason I love base 49 so much between 2K17, 18, and 19 is because it would green a lot. But even when it hit white, if it was an all white, it was money. And there was nothing more comforting for me knowing that even when I released that perfectly, if it showed up all white, it was banging. This year, that confidence does not exist. But still, the base does matter when it comes to these all whites. So if you notice you're getting more all whites than the next man and you got the same build as him, then there's a good chance you release. It just might be your release. Tier D, we're talking about Steady Shooter, Clutch Shooter, Ice and Veins, and Pump Fake Maestro. Steady Shooter reduces the penalties for contested shots and bonuses for open shots. Mike Wang clarified and I talked about it in a couple of videos, Steady Shooter does not look healthy. If you wanna hit contested shots, focus on Deadeye. It's been proven over the course of all 2Ks, it's always been a useful badge in the game. Steady Shooter, on the other hand, it gives you, you're not trying to miss open, are you? I, if you start missing open on my team, we're gonna have problems. Now, I'm a little bit hesitant putting Clutch Shooter this low on the list. My thinking is that it only applies to the last shot of the game. But if for whatever reason, let's say you're on the park and the score is 10-10 and then it triggers, so for the second half of the game, you're shooting lights out because of the badge, maybe it's a tier B. But we don't know enough about the badge. And honestly, I'm pretty pessimistic about it. If you have all these other badges that can help you green and stay hot, you got the hot zones, you're on fire, then you don't really need no clutch shooter. You're gonna be hitting your shots regardless. Ice in the veins improves the player's free throw percentage during critical moment. That's why it's tier D. You don't even need me to explain that. And pump fake maestro, what was it? Like you can, you have a better percentage chance after a pump fake. What, why? Deep fades, slippery off ball, and volume shooter are all question marks. They could be ass, they could be amazing. I'm gonna try my hardest to take a look at volume shooter first. It was a badge that was in NBA 2K16 and everybody hated it, but they reintroduced it in 2K20 and it's a totally different badge. It just has the same name. Boost shot percentage as shot attempts accrue throughout the game. Especially if you're a sharpshooter, you're putting up four or five shots in the park, could be useful. It could most definitely apply on the Pro-Am where you might be putting up 10, 15 shots in a game. And deep fades. I Ideally, I should put deep fades low on the tier list, but I'm so optimistic about the possibility of being able to hit high post fades with Hall of Fame range extender, Hall of Fame deep fades, and a pure sharp because you have like a 90 fadeaway. They gave you, so you could, you might be Kobe this year. We're gonna have to wait and see. We have, we just need people to play with it. So that's all the shooting badges in the game. Shout out to 2K Lab. They've been incredibly useful and I know they're grinding right now to get all the information on all the other badges. But that's not all. They changed a lot about shooting this year. One of the things Mike Wang talked about on Twitter was the shot meter. This year, if you turn off your shot meter, you'll get boosts when you release the ball really well, but you'll also get penalized more when you release the ball poorly. So if you're very comfortable with your jump shot and you don't change it often, turn off your jump shot meter. I like it, it's a good concept. So far in practice, it's been working really well. I haven't noticed any incredible boosts, but it's also, I don't have like a final jump shot yet. I'm using Kevin Love right now. Uh, NBA 2K Lab, they'll upload this video titled, Should I Turn Off the Shot Meter in 2K20? So we're gonna take a look at it. The results are pretty clear, and as you can see by the graphic, Aldridge's green percentage went up 6.5%, and the make percentage went up 3.5% when perfectly timed, all right? So Mellow's green percentage went up 6.5% as well, but the make percentage went up 4% opposed to Aldridge's 3.5%, also when perfectly timed, all right? Mike Wang's tweet, he said they would penalize you if you didn't time it right. So you really have to know your jumper and be comfortable yep. with it. So it's not massive boost, but if you don't need the shot meter, just turn it off anyway. You know me, I've been saying for a while, if you wanna shoot good in 2K, stop looking at your shot meter. If you develop a jump shot that gives you an easy cue on when you need to release the ball, then you're money. I don't look at my shot meter, I look at my player. So the second I find a jump shot I'm comfortable with, the first thing I'm doing is turning my shot meter off. I don't need it. You'll still know when you greened your release because it'll have a little splash under your player. And this year, they give you more information on the shot feedback, so you'll know exactly how you perform. 
So you'll know how the jump shot did. You'll get that information and feedback. At the same time, you get the boost associated with not having the jump shot meter. So if you feel that comfortable with your release, that's an easy no-brainer. Um, I'm gonna make a follow-up video once I find some good gold and Hall of Fame quick drop releases. I've been talking to other people and they've been giving me jump shots, so I'm gonna try those. I'm gonna try my own. I'm gonna try and find something that works. Problem is, I shoot in high latency. So if you guys are low latency, you live in like Washington DC or Virginia right beside a server, it's not gonna really apply. I'm gonna do the test anyway because I wanna find the best jump shot. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, you found it helpful, you already know what to do. I don't even need to tell you, all right? But there are four videos on the screen. That's odd. There's only three this time. Huh. All right then. Catch you guys in the next one.